working for you in the spirit of Arkansas. This is Channel 7 News Live at 5. Residents of a Southwest Little Rock apartment complex are told they have one week to find a new place to live. Thanks for watching tonight. I'm Beth Hunt. Aaron has the evening off. Scott is in Auburn for tomorrow's Razorback game, and we're going to join him in just a moment. But first, back to our top story. The owners of the Willow Creek apartment complex have been cited for more than 250 code violations, many of which the city says they didn't fix. Channel 7's Alicia Dover is here now with the latest on this story. Alicia. That's right, Beth. According to city documents, the Willow Creek apartment owners were given nearly a year to bring their buildings up to code. While the city says some of those issues were solved, other issues were not fixed. And the city says the owners failed to bring the units up to compliance with minimum building and housing codes. There were more than 250 violations, with more than 100 of those violations considered life safety issues. Overall, 48 units were declared unsafe. We were there today as the residents were given notice that they have one week to find new places to live. Several of the residents there told us they had recently moved into the complex, had just paid rent, and were not told of the previous issues when they agreed to move in there. The apartments I had seen, there was nothing wrong with them, nothing. So, I don't understand, you know, I mean, they say there's a lot of problems here, so. Do you think that they should have disclosed to you that there were issues with the apartment before you moved in? If there were if there were problems, I guess I felt like they should have said something then, but Coming up at 6, hear more from those residents having to make a quick move over this holiday weekend and also what the apartment complex manager has to say about being shut down. Back to you. Okay, we'll see you at 6 tonight, Alicia. Thank you. Your Metro first forecast with Chief Meteorologist Ned Permy. Well, as promised, rain on the increase as we move toward the holiday weekend already showing up on radar. As a matter of fact, most of it confined to northwestern Arkansas. But as we take a look at our five live Doppler radars, we have a, a strong thunder shower just in southern Pulaski County. It's actually weakened the last couple of volume scans, but this one that moved to the north of the Wrightsville area, you can see moving out of northern Jefferson County. Uh, that produced possibly a little bit of small hail. We had that signature earlier, but it is weakening. The brunt of the rainfall is confirmed fine to the river valley, especially north of Russellville, all the way up north of Heber Springs and north of the Clinton area and the Greer's Ferry Lake area, and also down in Yell County from Danville. This is all moving up toward Dardanelle and Russellville, moving toward the north-northeast at about 25. Temperatures, well, Cloud cover has helped to keep them down today. 90 degrees at Little Rock, Benton, Bryant, Malvern, Hot Springs, 91 Maumel Conway, and Cabot, 88 degrees at Stuttgart and Pine Bluff. For tomorrow, chance of rain up and elevated again. 50% probability at Cabot, 60% Conway and Hot Springs. Even higher amounts the farther north you go in the state. And high temperatures with clouds and rain held down into the mid to upper 80s around the state. 88 at Pine Bluff, 86. Benton and Bryant, chance of rain, 60% at Searcy and a high of 84. In town tonight, 73. Chance of rain and thunder showers scattered about 50% probability and a high temperature tomorrow, 86, with the chance of rain or thunder showers set at 60%. So rain to start the holiday weekend, but a drying trend to close it. We'll detail coming up. Okay, we'll see you in a few minutes, Ned. Well, traffic is backed up along Highway 67-167 following a deadly accident. Bill Sadler with State Police says it happened around 3.05 today northbound near Cabot. Sadler says it was a single vehicle rollover crash. The driver was killed. The passenger was taken to a local hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. Authorities say as of 4 o'clock, one lane of traffic was in the process of being reopened. Pulaski County Sheriff's deputies releasing surveillance video today of Anel Castro Hernandez's escape earlier this week. The surveillance video shows Castro Hernandez stepping off the bus and running away as a guard chases after him. The 29-year-old was being held on rape charges and was due in court on Monday for a hearing regarding his mental state. The inmate was last seen wearing dark blue jail pants and a white t-shirt. A reward of up to $1,000 is being offered for information leading to his capture. A fire in a Little Rock neighborhood leads to a homicide investigation. Police say two people were killed. Channel 7's Janelle Lilly was in the neighborhood today and joins us now with an update. Janelle. Beth, this morning while fire crews worked to put out the flames, police weren't hesitant to identify the two people found inside the home. But we know now the victims are 41-year-old David 
David Murphy and 29 year old Charity Hall. Neighbors say they moved in just a couple weeks ago. Police say the original call was for a structure fire and it was the fire department that found the bodies and then decided to call police to the scene. They initially called the death suspicious, but they're now saying it has been ruled a homicide. Police say they're still trying to figure out what happened. They haven't released the cause of death. Some in the neighborhood say they believe the fire was set intentionally to destroy evidence of the two murders. But when we asked police, they didn't confirm that theory, only shedding light on, about the property damage to the to the house. The damage to the property is not uh, very extensive. There is some damage, but uh, as far as it being a total loss of the structure, that would be a better question for the fire department. But uh, it, it does not appear that the structure was completely damaged. Coming up tonight at 6, though, Dave Murphy had just moved into the neighborhood. Family and friends say that he grew up only a few streets away. Hear how they describe him and their reaction to the neighborhood crime. Back to you, Beth. Okay, thanks so much to Nell Lilly tonight. Authorities have charged a second suspect in the fatal shooting of a Southern Arkansas University football player and a former student. The Columbia County Sheriff's Office says 23-year-old Timothy Johnson of Camden was charged Thursday with a terroristic act. The same charge was filed against 20-year-old Byron Dunn on Monday in the shooting. Brandon Hobdy and Wayne Payton were killed Sunday outside the VFW on Highway 82 East. Both Dunn and Johnson are being held on a $1 million bond. A Russellville family is looking for a missing woman who they say is suffering from mental illness. Police say 48 eight-year-old Lilia McDaniel walked away from a Russellville hospital on August 19th and hasn't been seen since. Her husband tells us that McDaniel was diagnosed with psychosis and is off her medications and suffers from delusions. If you have any information on her whereabouts, you're asked to call police. Well, this November, Arkansans will vote whether to allow alcohol sales statewide. The Secretary of State's office announced the Arkansas Alcoholic Beverage Amendment met the signature requirements to be on the November ballot for the general election. Now, if the pro proposed amendment passes, it would legalize the sale, manufacture, and transportation of alcohol alcohol statewide. Mixed predictions from Razorback fans here in Little Rock about tomorrow's game against Auburn. They're set to play tomorrow at 2 p.m. on the SEC Network. But before the season officially starts, you can catch our Razorback special tonight right here on Channel 7. Scott Inman is in Auburn for a preview of tonight's special along with 103.7 The Buzz's David Basil. Hey guys. Well, hello, Beth. It is a bit unusual to be in enemy territory to start the season here in 2014. First time the Razorbacks have started on the road since 1999. And, David, you have to go back to 1980 to find them start with a conference game. And it's not just any conference game. It's the team that made it all the way to the national championship game. It's a unique opener for sure. Coach Bielema alluded to that yesterday. But, Scott, this is what college football is all about. What a campus, what history, what traditions. Uh, they, are, they could have been very easily the defending national champs. Yeah. And so the, it's electric. The, the fans are ready to see their Auburn Tigers play. You had a chance. You came yesterday and, of course, did some reporting for us last night. But you had the chance to walk the campus today and kind of take in a little bit of the atmosphere. What was that like? Went to Toomer's Corner uh, where Harvey Updike uh, killed the trees that had been there for mm -hmm. many years and went to Toomer's Pharmacy, got the lemonade that's been famous for decades. And, again, this this uh, uh, fan base has so much pride in their Tigers, and they are sky high. Scott, the last two times they've attended games to the greatest game in the history of the program, so they are itching to get back into that stadium tomorrow at 3 o'clock. The merchandise we hear is flying off the shelves oh here. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Every picture you can think of, every kind of clothing, shoes, it was flying off the racks today. Yeah, so if you think about it though, in 2012, the Auburn Tigers were 3-9. and nine. Does that sound familiar? Sure Arkansas does. was 3-9. and nine. Auburn 12-2 and two the following year. Biggest turnaround in SEC history. We're not saying Arkansas is going 12-2, and two, but there's, there's definitely hope <laughs> that the Razorbacks can do better than they did a year ago. Exactly. Auburn is the sort of the template to say, hey, we can do it. And of course, last night showed that, hey, you can go on the road and maybe upset somebody. Look yes. what, South uh, what happened to South Carolina. That's rather. right. All right. Well, we're going to be set up shop for our Razorback special, and we'll join you again at 6 o'clock. That's all for now from Auburn. Beth, back to you. Okay, we'll see you at 6. Thanks. Well, ask any Razorback fan about last season, and they'll tell you it wasn't a season to remember. But Saturday kicks off a clean slate for the Hogs and a new network. Channel 7's Jordan Bonke is live at Dugan's Pub with more Jordan. Well, guys, it's quiet right now here at Dugan's, but I'm told come Saturday around 3 o'clock, Arkansas Razorback football kicks off. And we are so darn excited here in the River Market. And for a lot of reasons, the SEC Network, if you take a look over my right shoulder here, 
just starting to kick off. Just every bar in the River Market has the SEC network. If you don't have it, the River Market is the place to be. We had the assignment today, a lovely assignment at that, to go and ask folks how they think the Razorbacks will do this season. Yes, we remember last season. We forgot about it already, though. Take a listen to what they had to say. Hopefully better than last year, but uh, I don't I don't see their record improving too much. Um, I'm looking at probably about two games in the conference. Um, but the coach is going in the right direction for building for the Southeast Conference. <sighs> uh, my heart says that they're going to do really well. My head says maybe not so much. Now, coming up tonight at 10, we talk with bar owners like here at Dugan's and also at Gasano's closer to the River Market about how the SEC network can affect their business for the upcoming football season. That's all for now here at Dugan's. A quiet Dugan's, but not for long. We'll send it back to you. Okay, Jordan Bonke tonight. Thank you. And again, a reminder, the game is tomorrow at 3 o'clock on the SEC Network. And we want to remind you about our free KATV Sports app. You can download the app on your smartphone or tablet and stay up to date with all the action. In addition to scores and stats, you can also upload your own pictures of the game you're attending or pictures of your tailgate party even. So download the free KATV Sports app today. Well, still to come here on Live at 5, the developments in Syria and Iraq have caused the British government to raise its terror threat level. The concerns the U.S. government has of a possible attack here and the measures it's taken. That's coming up at 519. But first, we'll be out of the 90s for the weekend, but we'll also have some rain. Chief Meteorologist Ned Permy has your forecast when we come back. Skycams, sponsored by Middleton Heat and Air. From the weather team with the most experience, this is Channel 7 Chief Meteorologist Ned Permy. And meteorologist Barry Brandt has the afternoon off, and it started out beautiful with uh, dry weather and hardly any rain in the state, but just like clockwork, shower activity beginning to increase during the heat of the afternoon. We've got this trough of low pressure we're going to be dealing with for at least another 24 to maybe 36 hours as it pushes across the state right now. In central Arkansas, we can see lifting from Jefferson County into uh, the Lone Oak County, Prairie County, uh, southern Pulaski County area. Now, a few of these briefly pulsed up, but they have weakened quite a bit. This one here that moved into southern Pulaski County briefly showed signs that it could see a little bit of hail with it, but it has totally weakened. These showers also uh, have weakened as well from north of Stuttgart and through Prairie County. And uh, then in the River Valley and north of there, we've got numerous showers and thunder showers continuing to lift toward the northeast. You can see all the way from Yell County, from the Danville area, all the way up to Clarksville, all the way to near Russellville, Dardanelle, lifting into northern sections of Pope County eventually. And all the way into uh, areas like Stone County, picking up some thunder showers. So a little bit more active today for sure across the state. Let's take a look at our Middleton Heat and Air Sky Cam looking from western Pulaski County on top of Chenal Mountain. And we have partly cloudy skies right now. If you're starting to get in the car to travel to Auburn, we're still looking at a good chance of rain, not only here, but through Mississippi and Alabama. We're looking at a good chance of showers, thunder showers tomorrow. 86 will be the 3 p.m. kickoff temperature. And and if you're going to the ASU game, that is going to be at 6 p.m. tomorrow up in Jonesboro. A 60% chance of thunder showers. They'll be scattered about with mostly cloudy skies. Kick off about 84 degrees. High so far today. We're right around the 90 degree mark around the state. 89 degrees at Russellville. 80 to 92 degree reading at Texarkana. And 93 degrees at Jonesboro before some of the clouds moved in. Rainfall has been spotty. A little over a quarter of an inch down at Texarkana. They had some showers earlier in the morning in southwestern Arkansas and less than uh, a tenth of an inch for the most part over the northwestern counties where the rain continues through this region lifting to the north right now and of course the trough of low pressure is moving our way with plenty of ample Gulf moisture. Look at all the showers down along the Gulf Coast and dew points. They are well into the 70s as this moisture surges north into the mid-south. That's just going to only increase the chances of rain and thunder shower activity and as that frontal boundary or it's really just a trough of low pressure. We don't have a lot of cool air behind it, but it will swing through and pivot through, and that's going to bring the showers on an increased chance through at least Saturday, Sunday, and Labor Day, looking much better. Temperature is 88 degrees with a south wind at 13 miles an hour and the dew point at 72, so it is pretty humid out there, but the temperatures, they're in check, mostly in the upper 80s right now. It is 90 degrees at Texarkana and El Dorado and 91 at West Memphis and Jonesboro and high dew points as well. That means plenty of 
of moisture available for scattered showers. Here's our future cast run. It's going to take us right into the holiday weekend. And as we see, that trough eventually just kind of swings across northern Arkansas and increasing the chances of rain, especially during the afternoon and evening. Then they'll decrease a little bit at night and increase again on Saturday and Saturday evening. And then by Sunday, high pressure builds in and the heat definitely returns. So thunder showers, 50% probability tonight with a low temperature, 73 degrees. Tomorrow's high. 86 with a 60% chance of rain or thunder showers tomorrow night 50% chance of rain or thunder showers low of 71 and the extended forecast a dry forecast on Monday after a 30% chance of showers moving out on Sunday yeah. so Labor Day looking much better okay I, I'm told that we have a little a double rainbow that is forming behind us on the, there on the screen it is. yeah it's a pretty sight to see on that this Friday looking afternoon on toward the east yeah Okay, we just thought we'd share that. Thanks, Ned. Well, next here on Live at Five, former Presidents Bill Clinton and George W. Bush are teaming up for a new leadership program. Details on their initiative coming up. Plus, President Obama's statement at the White House had a lot of Americans talking, but not because of what he said, but what he wore. We'll have reaction on the president's fashion choice after the break. Former President George W. Bush and Bill Clinton are joining forces on a new initiative. They're launching the Presidential Scholars Program, which will give leaders better skills to solve problems. It will involve the foundations run by Clinton and Bush and will include the George Herbert Walker Bush and Lyndon Baines Johnson Presidential Centers. The program is designed to give motivated leaders, quote, an opportunity to study presidential leadership and decision making and learn from key administration officials. Well, Britain has raised its terror threat level, but the White House does not expect the U.S. to raise its threat level. British Prime Minister David Cameron says the decision to raise the level from substantial to severe is from related developments in Iraq and Syria. However, Cameron says there is no information to suggest that an attack is imminent. White House spokesman Josh Ernest says U.S. officials are in touch with British counterparts about their decision. He says the U.S. is also monitoring the threat of foreigners fighting alongside militants in Iraq and Syria who could travel back to their home countries. Before we get started, and just for the sake of uh, efficiency, I know that there's uh, at least one aspect of the president's news conference yesterday that attracted some attention. And, you know, the president stands squarely behind the decision that he made yesterday to wear his summer suit at yesterday's <laughs> news conference. <laughs> so Thursday before Labor Day, he feels pretty good about it. White House Press Secretary Josh Ernest jokingly addressed the suit President Obama wore while discussing possible U.S. military action in Syria. Obama's fashion choice lit up Twitter with mixed reaction. He typically wears darker suits. Well, coming up on Live at Five next, many Americans enjoyed a summer vacation, but it wasn't a complete getaway from work. A look at a new study revealing just how many people were still connected to their job while on vacation. That's after the break. Welcome back. Car on demand service Uber is expanding to more cities, including Fayetteville. The app based ride share company posted on its website today that it has launched in 24 new markets, 22 of them in the U.S., one in Australia, and another in New Zealand. That means the service, which allows users to connect with drivers for hire, is now available in 205 cities across 45 countries. Well, summer is coming to a close, and while many Americans took a vacation, most of us didn't really get away from it all. A recent survey by TripAdvisor found 77% of Americans confessed to doing some work away from the office. The survey revealed 9 in 10 American workers have checked their email while on vacation and 85% responded to emails. 45% confessed to checking voicemail, while 40% said they returned some of those calls. 42% said they created or edited a work document. Well, the price of crude oil rose $1.41 a barrel today, closing at $95.96. The stock market saw gains. The Dow was up 18 points to close at 17098 The Nasdaq up 22 points. We'll be right back.
up tonight on Channel 7 News at 6 o'clock, a baby turtle is getting noticed because it was born with two heads. Coming up at 6, Alexis Rogers talks with the owner about just how rare it is to find a mutation like this and what's next for the baby turtle. Here's Sully also with a preview of sports. Coming up at sports at 6 o'clock, we'll check in with our crew at Auburn. They're getting ready for our big Razorback special, which airs at 7 o'clock. But the big news today actually comes from the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame, where this morning, North Little Rock star K.J. Hill officially committed to the University of Arkansas. You'll hear from North Little Rock's All Everything receiver coming up at 6. All right, Sully, thanks a lot. And Sully just mentioned Scott Inman, Chris Kane, and David Basil will be live from Auburn for our Razorback special tonight. The 2014 season, a season of redemption, starts at 7 o'clock right here here on Channel 7. Well, that does it for us here on Live at 5. Thanks for watching. We'll, of course, have more Arkansas news coming up in 30 minutes. That's right after World News. We'll see you right back here at 6 o'clock. Until then, have a great night.